If you like a mix of horror and family drama, The Haunting of Hill House on Netflix is perfect. It follows the Crane family who lived in a spooky old mansion filled with ghosts and secrets. If I dream that you sent us away into the dark and me get hurt, really hurt. What if I'm so sad and scared of the dark out there that I put poison in me? For years and years. The story flips between the past and present, showing how their experiences in the house affected their lives. It's not just about scares, but also about how the family deals with grief and trauma. I have to die. In time on a silver table. It's my jaw wired shut. Mommy! <laughs> Do you wake us up from a dream like that? While the series is fictional, it's based on Shirley Jackson's novel, which drew from various ghost stories and legends. The main one is said to be inspired by Sarah Winchester, a firearms heiress who turned a farmhouse into what became known as the Winchester Mystery House. Winchester was said to be haunted by guilt and the spirits of those killed by the family's firearms. She was not crazy. Neither was your sister, neither is your brother, neither are you. It's that house. The architecture of the house itself, let's say, is interesting. Stairs were built to the ceiling, doors led to nowhere, and windows were punched into inside walls. bad dream of course I'd wake you the exorcist is a classic horror movie that scared the pants off audiences when it came out it's about a little girl named Reagan who starts acting very strangely think talking in weird voices and doing creepy things like spinning her head around her mom is desperate and turns to two priests for help. What follows is an intense and terrifying exorcism. I'm gonna die up there. I need reassignment. You're the best we've got. I think I've lost my faith. Is there someone inside you? Sometimes. Who is it? I don't know. Is it Captain Howdy? Uh... Have you ever heard of exorcism? How do you go about getting an exorcism? I beg your pardon? I'm Damien Karras. I'd like to help you. Where's Regan? In here with us. This movie is based on a true story from 1949 involving a boy known by the pseudonym Roland Doe. He reportedly experienced similar bizarre behaviors after using a Ouija board. Priests who performed the exorcisms documented everything describing how objects moved by themselves and how Roland spoke in strange languages. This case fascinated people and was turned into a novel, which then became the famous film. What an excellent day for an exorcism. Houses here are way out of our price range. When the business is good, we are going to have the greatest house. It's beautiful. This is an amazing house. You are going to love it. Holy. This is the deal of a lifetime. So, what's the catch? There was a crime, a, a murder. In the house? In the heart of Amityville, New York, the Lutz family moved into what seemed like a beautiful dream house, only to find themselves in a waking nightmare. They encountered unexplained strange noises, ghostly apparitions, and even the chilling sensation of being possessed. This tale of terror retold in numerous movies and books continues to haunt the imagination of many. Into a perfect family. Who are you talking to? The girl who lives in my closet. And what's her name? Jody. What's the matter? Just seeing things, I guess. 
need to come back to bed. I can't sleep. Oh, this is my mind. There was a family lived here some time ago. They had a similar problem. I'm living in their house. We need to get out of here. Just back up and go. Everything we have is in this house. It's okay, Mommy. Jody won't hurt you. But the man who lives here, Jesus, he's bad. The spine-chilling story of the Amityville horror is rooted in the real-life experiences of the Lutz family during the 1970s. Before their arrival, the house was the grim scene of a gruesome mass murder where Ronald DeFeo Jr. mercilessly killed six members of his own family. The Lutz family later reported intense supernatural activities, which they believed were connected to these tragic events. While some skeptics dismissed the occurrences as a hoax, the legend of this haunted house endures. There's something evil in my house. It is the cold hand of nightfall that opens the door to our deepest fears. Picture a regular family in London whose life turns upside down as they begin experiencing an array of creepy phenomena in their home. This forms the premise of the Enfield Poltergeist series on Apple TV+. Based on real events from the late 1970s, the series blends real audio recordings and interviews with dramatic reenactments to vividly recreate the unsettling occurrences. Viewers are drawn into the harrowing experience of a single mom and her children, who face not just strange noises and moving furniture, but even levitation. What you want? Tell us what you want. I can't comment you. Real life story. The Hodgson family, especially the young daughters Janet and Margaret, claimed they were being haunted by a poltergeist. Paranormal investigators like Maurice Gross spent a lot of time in the house and recorded hours of spooky incidents. Some skeptics thought the kids were just making it up for attention, but others believed something supernatural was really happening. This case became so famous that it inspired movies like The Conjuring 2. The Enfield Poltergeist, streaming October 27th on Apple TV+. All right, it's 9.18, we're headed down into the cellar where the doors just opened on its own. You give us a sign that you want to communicate with us. Movie Summary This film follows Ed and Lorraine Warren, famous paranormal investigators, as they help the Perone family deal with disturbing supernatural events in their farmhouse. The movie is filled with jump scares and creepy moments, making it a hit among horror fans. There's something horrible happening in my house. Ed and Lorraine Warren were real-life paranormal investigators who documented many cases of hauntings. The haunting of the Perron family in the 1970s was one of their most famous cases. The family reported strange noises, objects moving, and ghostly apparitions. The Warrens believed the house was haunted by a witch named Bathsheba Sherman, who had cursed the land. Their case files and experiences have inspired several movies in the Conjuring series. It is so hateful. Here. That's not gonna help. This thing has latched itself to your family. Probably we never seen nothing like this. I'm coming with you. No way. I can't lose you. There's a lady in a dirty nightgown that I see in my dreams. She's standing in front of my mom's bed. Yeah. And the music stops. You see him in the mirror standing behind you. Look what she made me do. <laughs> His 
spook easily, Starling? Not yet, sir. This movie is about an FBI trainee, Clarice Starling, who is trying to catch a serial killer named Buffalo Bill. To understand him better, she interviews another serial killer, Dr. Hannibal Lecter, who is both brilliant and terrifying. Their interactions are intense and creepy, making for a gripping thriller. Real physical strength, cautious, precise, and he's never impulsive. He'll never stop. Hannibal Lecter is believed to be a composite character inspired by several real-life serial killers like Ed Gein and Ted Bundy. I'll help you catch him, Clary. Believe me, you don't want Hannibal Lecter inside your head. However, not many people know Harris's inspiration behind the legendary character. According to the author, he got the idea as a 23-year-old journalist in the early 1960s when he visited the Nuevo Leon State Prison. Here, he was meant to report on convicted murderer Dykes Askew Simmons, but found himself instead intrigued by Alfredo Bali Trevino, who had patched Simmons up after he acquired injuries on attempting a prison escape. Trevino was reportedly known as Dr. Salazar in the prison, and Harris described him as a small, lithe man with dark red hair with a certain elegance about him. Thank you, Clary. They chatted with Harris assuming he was prison medical staff. Later the author learned Trevino was in fact also an inmate. Trevino was put behind bars for killing and mutilating his lover Jesus Castillo Rangel. He was also suspected of killing several hitchhikers in the late 1950s and early 1960s though this was never confirmed. 